Hello, in this lecture we will work our inventory problem using the weighted average method. So in the past we have used the LIFO method, then the FIFO method. Now we're going to put the one that is in the middle in most cases in terms of results to both uh, inventory and cost of goods sold, which is the weighted average method. So we're going to use this information. We're going to put that information into this worksheet using our purchasing column, our cost of merchandise column, our inventory column. We'll then see the related journal entries and see these transactions in context to a chart of accounts and the accounting equation. So our first date here being 3-1 and we start off with our beginning inventory as we have in the other problems being the 100 units at tab $50.00. We're going to multiply those two together. We're going to say equals left twice 100 times left once 50. I'm going to select tab 100 times 50 means that we have a dollar amount of 5,000. I'm going to say equals in the total column and left once and pull that over into this column as well. Why do we have two total columns? Because later on uh, we could have uh, you know more than one layer and this final total column is to clarify the actual dollar amount that would be on the balance sheet as is shown in our trial balance at this time inventory being that initial 5000 then we're going to take a look at the first thing that happens which will be a purchase of 400 units at $55 on 35 all right so we're going to put that into the purchasing column just like we have in the past and we're going to have 400 units purchased and we purchased them for 50, $55. The price has gone up from 50 to 55. We're going to then say in cell E61 equals left twice to the 400 times left once to the 55, giving us the 22,000. Now, what I'm going to do is calculate the average here. So I'm going to start off with a similar type of function that we did before in that I'm going to pull these numbers down going to copy these we still have these going to put them into this date column in k61 i'm going to right click paste them one two three so we don't have to worry about the formulas uh, changing then i'm going to copy the new layer being the 400 at 55 giving us the 22 copy those i'm going to put them right underneath in k62 right click and paste them one two three so now we need to calculate the average in order to do that I'm going to get the total quantity in just these two columns as of the date of 3-5. So I'm going to equal sum of the 100 and the 400 and select control enter to remain on the same cell. Gives us the 5. I'm then going to skip over here to the total cost. I'm going to add up the total cost column. So I'm going to say equals the sum of, we're going to take the 5,000 and the 22 and enter that's the total cost so in here then i'm going to calculate the average cost per unit so remember that some cost 50 some cost 55 there were a lot more that cost 55 than 50 4 and 400 and 100 so the average has got to be somewhere between the 50 and the 55 if we did this in a calculator we would take the 27 if that's the total cost divided by how many units total the 500 then we're going to say, ah, they're about 54. So some cost 55, some cost 50. Well, that's about 54. Why is it about 54 and not just in between the 50 and the 55? Because there were a lot more that cost 55. So let's put that here. We're going to say this equals this number, the 27, divided by the 500 units. So they cost about 54. If we were to recalculate that over here in the total column just to bring it over to... to uh, not have the confusion in terms of this column here we could recalculate it being the 500 times the 54 now should now prove what the proof that this is the 27,000 total that would be an ending inventory if we were to post this there's no uh, estimation within the purchase price we purchased we purchased 400 units at 55 so i'm going to say that equals the 22 here so inventory goes up by the 22 and then we're going to credit the accounts payable indicating that we purchased it on account. 
So then we're going to post this transaction into our trial balance where we have a beginning balance, we have the adjustment column, and we have the ending balance so we could see what happens within context to other accounts. And we'll also see what happens in terms of our accounting equation. So in cell V63, I'm going to say equals and point to the 22. That's a debit. This is a debit. It's going to bring the inventory up in the debit direction to 27,000, which will equal our balance over here on our worksheet. Then we're going to go into accounts payable in V64. That equals, and we're going to point to the 22,000 here. And that's a credit. This is a credit. It's going to make this go up in the credit direction to 34,150. All right, let's see what is the next transaction that we have. I'm going to make sure we are on the next row in row 64. And we are now on March 9th. And we have a sale of 420 units. And we sold them for $85. So we note that the $85 is the sales price, not the purchase price. We're going to use the $85 when conducting the journal entry over here for the sales portion. But we are worried about the cost over here. So that $85 is irrelevant in terms of this worksheet. So we know that we sold 420 units. The question is, how much did those units cost? Did they cost 50, 55, or 54? Well, we're going to say some cost 50, some cost 55, but they all cost about 54 in this case. That's the average. So we're going to say the 420 times the 54 then gives us the 22,680. And then how much do we have left then? Well, of these 500 units, we now sold minus 420 tab. And we're all say they cost yeah about 54 tab. And then we're going to say that the total cost then is the 80 units times 54 tab. And I'm just going to put those, pull that out over into the outer column as well so we can see it out here. I'm going to record this transaction now. Now the first half of the transaction is the sales portion. For that portion, we don't need this worksheet at all. We just need these two numbers. Just like you would in the supermarket, you just need the sales price times how much of the stuff you bought. And that is going to be the 420 times 85. So accounts receivable, assuming we bought it on account, would go up and revenue would go up. So if we record that half of the transaction, we're going to go over here to accounts receivable in V62 equals. And we're going to scroll over here to the debit. That's a debit. This is a debit. It's going to make this go up in the debit direction. We are now out of balance. Then we're going to go to revenue down here in V66 and say that equals point to the revenue. Revenue will go up in the credit direction when we hit enter, put it back in balance. Net income will go up, meaning that income is now 35.7 credit minus the expenses here. We have a 24.980 income revenue over expenses from this first transaction. But we have another transaction that happened. Of course, we didn't uh, just get revenue. We had to give up something, that something being inventory. How much did that inventory cost? Well, under the average method, it costs 22680 It's going to be the debit and the credit. The cost of goods sold, the cost related, the expense related to that sale equals the 22680 Once we hit enter, this will go up, put us out of balance, and it'll bring net income down. Then we're going to record the inventory, double click, go to the end of it, plus, and we're going to go to this 22680 this is a credit, that's a debit, they're opposites, therefore this is going to go down, opposites make it go down to 4320 being the amount that we have on our worksheet over here. Then we're going to go to the next column, see the next transaction, and record it. And the next transaction is on 318, and it says that we have a purchase of 120 units at $60, 120 at 60 so we're in the purchasing columns. We've got another 120 tab. We bought them for $60 tab. This equals left twice times left once and tab or enter. And we've got 7,200. What we're going to do then is calculate the average once again. So in order to do that, I'm going to copy what we have left from the prior transaction being the 80 at 54, giving us the 4320. I'm going to right click and copy that and put that under our new transaction here. So as of this date line, I'm pasting it 123 values only. As of this new date, 
we're going to use this in our calculation. Then I'm going to copy this new purchase. I'm going to copy that and paste it one, two, three.